Welcome everyone, another week with you. This time we are in Zurich to review the Pavillon Le Corbusier. This building is special for many reasons. I will try to provide as much info as possible in the time we have and I don't know if you noticed in the intro, but the museum was almost under renovations already. I shot all the footage in the last day it was open to the public and it's currently closed until 2019. So if you like the building, watch the video twice. Let's start with the context of the building. This is Le Corbusier's last building before passing away. In 1960 he got the request from Heidi Weber, who was an art collector and patron, to build a small home for herself in an art and exhibit space. In 1964 the construction started he passed away in 1965 and due to these and other complications during construction, the building was not completed until 1967. Initially the building was named Heidi Weber Museum and was managed by her foundation until 2016. Since then, it's the cultural department of the city of Zurich who takes care of the space and organizes the exhibitions and works exposed there. In this process, the name of the museum changed to be Pavillon Le Corbusier. The building is considered a total work of art. Not only the building was designed by Le Corbusier, but sculptures as well, paintings, furniture designs and writings were part of the building. This combination of elements make it more unique. I don't know of many buildings that can be considered as a whole as this, and this is a very important and pivoting point. A full work of art in the end of Le Corbusier's life. His work is very linked to the exposed concrete and rough finishes. And although the first concept for the building was showing a concrete structure, this was later changed to a prefabricated steel construction. In this case, the change of material was not because his architecture was moving towards the use of prefabricated materials like steel. It was actually Heidi Weber who convinced him that metal was the perfect material to implement and express his module studies. So it's not a change in his beliefs as an architect, but it's a big change in the how anyway, compared to other of his buildings. The interesting part of the construction of this pavilion are the two independent structures. First, the roof was prefabricated, transported and built on site. This was the first element above ground to be built. After that, disconnected from the roof, the frame is assembled on site and floors, walls and windows are installed. All this was placed on a concrete foundation and floor. If you talk about Corbusier, you need to think about his modulor. The modulor was an anthropomorphic scale of proportions he created and used in his works. And this pavilion is a very good example, as he implemented all of it to the scale of the building. So, 
The building is a grid with two module types, A and B, repeated all across the building. The A module is a 238 by 238 meters and the B module is a 119 by 238 meters. So you can fit two B modules in an A module. The building roof is made out of two squares of 11.9 by 11.9 meters, with a central segment of 238. Each roof square is a 5A by 5A module and that central segment is an extra A. In plan, the building is used in a total grid of 11A by 5A modules. The metal structure of the two first floors of the building is responding to these grids as well. Now, according to all his studies, the perfect module has 113 by 226 as dimensions although he is using 119 and 238 meters for the building. Why? Well, a grid is an imaginary line and buildings need space for structures. So basically in that cap between 226 and 238, he fits the steel structure of the building. This way he keeps the space he believes perfect for the user untouched. That's quite a lot of information in math. If this is not clear enough, let me know in the comments and I will clarify. Also, it's worth mentioning the rotating doors. An element very common in his architecture as we saw in the Ronchamp video, that appears here with almost exactly the same ingredients and with the same uses in the building. I think with these three condensed points of the building, you have a better understanding of why the building has so much meaning. All these concepts have almost 100 years, and although they are not used currently, they were a huge revolution for architecture, as they redefined the scale of a building and all its dimensions based on the user. More than the rules themselves, is the time they were created. The circumstances of the project is what I like the most about it. The use of a metal structure, the inclusion of paintings and sculptures in the atmosphere of the building, the fact that it was his last work before passing away and the difficulties to finish the project. There are lots of things that make this project so special. Are you planning on visiting the building in 2019 after the renovations? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.